works, Jails. Oh, yeah, right? You gotta see if it's... You gotta crank it up. Yeah, man. All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation. Friday Night Knicks. And works. impromptu... Oh, yeah, right? You gotta see if it's... Gotta crank it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, here we, we go. gotta crank it up. And uh, I, I got Nation. the audio already. Friday on. night Knicks. So yep. let's start. Let's start that over. This is this is off season edition tales. You know. <laughs> okay. I mean? All right. This, this off is off season. season. This is off season. So anyway, salute to Knicks Nation. Happy Friday to everybody out there. Friday night Knicks. CP from Knicks Fan TV. My man JLs from Nick at Time Show. The number one show for the fans by the fans is back with a spontaneous. Episode. We're gonna talk about this Carmelo Anthony interview and react to it. Yeah, because you you know JLs, this is the off season, off season, mm-hmm. and sometimes when when certain things happen, yes, draft is over, free agency is over, but sometimes when certain things happen, you 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 you, uh, you, you take the temperature. Of the streets, see what's going yeah. on. That was definitely yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean. You you get that same vibe, right? Like 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 you know the the streets wanted to talk about this, so let's talk about it. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about it. So uh, if you guys are diehard Knicks fans who likes to talk about Knicks news, Knicks rumors, and post game live fan reactions after every game, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. All right, Jails. So Melo goes on Stephen A. Smith show today. I want to clear the air. It's 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 been a while since Carmelo Anthony has been on an NBA team. Mm-hmm. He was unceremoniously removed from the Houston Rockets organization. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> the free agency hoopla has come and gone, and Carmelo Anthony is still on the outside looking in. Yeah. So so let's break it down. So he, he went on Stephen A. It was a great interview, first and foremost. I thought it was a very good, I thought it was a candid interview. I haven't watched first take in God knows how long. So I I, I, th- I thought it was, it was a very good interview, man. Um, let, Let's go to his couple points. Number one on the Rockets. He said that uh, he was surprised that he that things didn't work out there. He said they had been courting him for years. Yeah, three years. Had three years. <laughs> had a solid game. You know, had some solid games for the for the Rockets. Yeah, dropped thirty on on Brooklyn. Dropped thirty on the bum ass Nets. Yeah. And soon afterwards, was told by Daryl Morey. He said his services were no longer needed. That's that's Ooh. what he said. That Daryl Morey told him. He said his services were no longer needed. Tough pill to swallow, CP. Tough pill to swallow, man. What what do you what do you think about that, man? Um, first and foremost, just the interview in general. Uh you, you gotta thank Chris Brickley, man. I think Chris Brickley, he came on the Breakfast Club, he stirred up some trouble yeah. by saying that uh that uh he was going to be Looking for a farewell tour, and I, and that got him on Stephen A. Smith's radar. And in general, I just thought it was like a good move for Melo to just come on, yeah, and talk to the people in general. Seeing as you know, free agency is damn near over, and my man Melo still doesn't have a job, which is crazy. Which is crazy. Which, yeah, which is crazy. And, and you're right. You know, I think Brickley got a little bit ahead of himself, and Melo even said he said there's too many people speaking for him. Or speaking about him, so he had to come on and, and clear the air. Now, what's your takes on on how he left the Rockets? What, what do you think about that? Well, the, the Rock, I, I feel like Melo. It's weird because when you hear Melo talk about how he left the Rockets and how that happened, first of all, it was only ten games, so I felt like it was a pretty premature for them to cut right. Melo so quickly, so fast. He's like he said in the interview, he was just getting used to being a bench role. He hasn't really been a bench guy. And, I mean, he wasn't playing to the all-star medal seat uh, level, but, you know, he was still working himself in. So I felt like 10 games were a little bit premature to cut him, and I felt like they should have given him a lot more room to see what he could do on that, on that team. He was kind of used as a scapegoat. Man. Like, that, that's what I thought, man. I, I thought 10 games was... 
something something was up there, man. Something was up with with Melo, man. First of all, for, for for a GM to use those words that your services are no longer needed, yeah, it's, that's deep. That's deep, bro. You, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah, that, that's not just like you know it's not working out. We're going to go in another direction. This is ten games into it, Jails. You know what I mean? Something was not kosher there, man. The Rockets, I know the cult. I know everybody talk about the culture of the Knicks. Yeah, the culture of the Rockets is a little weird. Like it's funny because they've been winning. They've had some winning seasons, right? But like the CP thing where they traded him out weirdly out of nowhere after they said they wasn't going to try to move him. Mm-hmm. Even the weird Jeremy Lin thing between Jeremy Lin and Dwight Howard and 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 Hart, and I felt like that was kind of weird. I felt like he was kind of using a scapegoat too. Like I feel like the the culture there is a little, it's a little something funny, but that's yeah, that's beside yeah. the point. Yeah, <laughs> listen, they, listen, they talk about us how dysfunctional we are. I mean, there's a couple other teams that you could add to that list. The Rockets being one of them. Yeah, yeah it's just they're winning, so it's not exacerbated by the losing, and then and then the Microsoft isn't on them. But yeah, there's something funny with that culture, and for them to blame Melo and have him excommunicated so quickly was just kind of odd. And the fact that even Melo, he said, as far as is not to his knowledge, he didn't think that Mike D'Antoni had anything to do with it. That's strange. That's strange. And he he said not only did Mike D'Antoni not have, he didn't think he, D'Antoni had anything to do with it. He didn't think that CP3 and James Harden were in on it. And I find that very hard to believe, bro. I find that very hard to believe. You think CP3 has something to do? I don't think. That bro. was that. I don't think CP3. You Listen, really think man, you want to tell me that this GM is just sitting here 10 games into it, into a season, looks at Carmelo, who just dropped 30 on the Nets, was averaging 13 and 4 for them, just looked at it and said, you know what? I'm going to get rid of this guy and, and let's move with, um, I forgot the young, the young boy's name that they, that they moved in with his place. You want to tell me that he just made that decision without D'Antoni knowing and signing off on it and without his two stars knowing and signing off on it? I, I can't. I find that very hard to believe. I can't. I just can't see. I can see. I definitely can see D'Antoni signing off. I definitely can't see because Nate Robinson's still mad at D'Antoni. Right. <laughs> like to, to this day. So I, so I know D'Antoni be doing some funny stuff. Um. CP3, I don't know, man. They just seem so... Maybe I don't want to believe it, man. Yeah. Maybe I don't, don't want to believe it either. I don't want to believe it either, man. James Harden don't really owe him nothing, really, really. But CP3, I don't I don't know. I, I don't think... I don't want to believe there's, it. There's no way you're going to make a roster move that critical and serious without your two stars knowing about it. I can't... I find that hard to believe. After 10 games, it's deeper than... I think Melo was hitting on the head. It's deeper than basketball... And like I said, for the GM to come in and be like, they they said, he said uh, they were on the road going to San Antonio. He was in San Antonio in the hotel room. The GM comes to him and basically says, um, basically says, uh, your services are no longer needed. That's the thing, though. Like, CP, they ordered the CP and LeBron and Melo. They're the banana boat crew, dog. The banana they, they boat gotta, crew, man. They got to push Melo off the boat? I don't know, At, man. But I after 10 games? After 10 games? I think something something just doesn't add up there. Something just didn't add up there, man. I don't I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Dan Tony. I can't, I can't buy CP, man. I, I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah. rolling. I'm not rolling. That, uh, that's tough. That's tough. Let's we'll see what some people in the chat say. Shout out to everybody in the chat. It's, it's been a while, man. I had to dust off the console. JL's had to dust yeah. off the console. You know, we, we over here enjoying the summertime. But nice. uh, like like we said, we, we had to come in and and uh, check the pulse of the fan base just to, just to talk about it. I think it was a very interesting interview. I think it was a very interesting interview. Uh, Mega BKNY says Rockets is trash for that. John Talento, salute to John. He says it's all D'Antoni. Ricky King thinks it was hard, and he says, look what he did to CP3. Somebody, yeah, somebody had an interesting comment on that. Look how CP3 and Harden fell out, and you know, yeah. not so shortly, they're, they're, they're right at this year, end of this season. Ten games, though? Ten that's, games. That's, nah, man. 
10. And, and and the thing the thing about that to 10 games too is like I think that exacerbated everything that w- all the Melo's problems because people are thinking oh well it must be Melo's attitude right why we're not going to give him a shot with the Rockets right and therefore we're not even going to give him a shot anymore and I don't know if that's completely fair like this guy he's talented enough to, to contribute to a, a team he should be somewhere. Right. He should be on somebody's team, like he said. There's not ten guys better than him on every roster. It's kind of crazy, NBA. man. It's kind of crazy, man. There's 450 <laughs> players in the NBA, man. Come on, bro. That's crazy. And yes, and to get that news where you're out of the rotation completely, not even, not even. You know, at that time he had said he had accepted the bench role with the Rockets. That's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. You know, that's what he said. We take him for his word. Maybe, you know, the Rockets felt differently, but to, for, for them to not even give him any minutes, that's kind of crazy. What happened in that OKC game, man? I think something happened in that OKC game. That's the only thing I could come up with, man. Something happened in the OKC game. Yeah. Maybe there was some, like, tempers flaring because that was this old team. He felt slighted and they lost. Right. Um, I don't know. I heard Stephen A. talk about how um, – like the GM, they don't like to lose. He doesn't like to lose in certain interests. He's a very prideful person. Yeah. I think even Steve May was even talking about after that loss to Golden State without Kevin Durant, he almost guaranteed that that GM was going to make a move just because he just, that's his temperament. So right. maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe something happened at OKC that tested his temperament and, and caused him to kind of come down and shake things up so quickly. Yeah. Well, I mean, listen, remember the Rockets are under new ownership now. Yeah, you know, Rockets been under new ownership since 2017, so Daryl Morey got to get his ducks in a row because he's gonna be out of there shortly. So it's on him to make sure that the team is improving. I just don't see after 10 games how you make that call on Melo so fast. Yeah, it's not enough time. Right. So that was Houston. Let's talk about OKC now. So now he he Stephen A. shifts to OKC and basically asks Melo. Does he feel like it was the same, you know, his exit from OKC was similar to the Rockets? And this is where Melo kept it a buck. He said, listen, I don't feel that way because basically with OKC, he was still expecting to fill a prominent role on that team. Yeah. He wasn't expecting to come off the bench. He even joked and said that they made him the fourth option behind Steven Adams, which is like, yeah. Like damn, that's crazy. <laughs> but let's be let's be clear though. Like, yeah, that first year of OKC, when that reporter asked Melo if he was coming off the bench, and he looked over at, at, at PG, he was like, "Yo, P, yeah. you didn't want me to come off the bench." <laughs> that that was like. <laughs> Meanwhile, Paul George is like, "Yes, we do want you to come off the bench." <laughs> <laughs> that was an iconic moment. Yeah, that was an iconic moment, and let, let's be real clear. When when GMs and coaches are trying to say, okay, should we bring Melo in here? I know they're replaying that clip over and over again in their head from that from that EOP. That yeah, I know that yeah. people are thinking that. So I mean, I'm sorry, but go ahead, CP. Go ahead. Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right, man. I 100 percent agree with you. And what basically what he stated was he wasn't in that frame of mind where he wasn't adjusted to to accepting a lesser role. That's, yeah. that's what he was saying. And listen, put yourself in his shoes. You're coming from being the guy in Denver, being the guy at Madison Square Garden for the Knicks, the, the leading guy, and then all of a sudden you get traded. You go to OKC, you're playing with Westbrook, you're playing with Paul George, you feel like those guys are your peers, that you're on par with them. And then through back channels, through the media, and through other entities that are not team personnel from what Mel is saying he's hearing that he needs to take less money he needs to come off the bench blah say blah I mean let's be clear like that's that was happening in New York like I remember we was having I was having shows about other podcasts I mean so he was talking about that in New York he's like oh, yo Mel needs to come off the bench he's come off the bench yeah taking a step slow right. not hitting shots as a high clip as he used to it'd be cool if he was in New York but his temperament is weird and if he's not cool coming off the bench, he got to go. Yeah. So, <laughs> and that's what the fans were saying when he was in New York. So you knew that that was going to be the narrative going somewhere else. And it sounds like 
everybody was just kind of scared to talk to him. That that's what it seems like, and that's what he kind of intimated himself in the interview. And it just seems like, you know, he he admitted it. Just like the AI situation, he said it took it's take it took him some time to really adjust to 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 taking that secondary role, and and it took him some time. But he said OKC okay, wasn't ready for it. With the Rockets, he was ready for it. Neither cases, it's worked out. Right. In neither cases, it's where it's worked out. Most definitely. I mean, but listen, there, like if he's willing to accept his role, then maybe he'll be able to uh, to flourish with the team, man. Because it's not like he's not talented, man. Like, right. Melo is still cold. The the, t- the talent is there, but that's why I feel like he's blackballed, bro. He's black, like he's blackballed. He's black for what reason? I don't know. He's definitely. It's the attitude, man. It's like. It's, the, it's even if he, even if he doesn't have the attitude now, the perception of the attitude, and which is why it was smart for him to even come on the show because he, had he got to. the perception. He out had of to. It. He had to get that PR going. Because even when he was on, I was on the Knicks, and, and I was like, "Yo, I was kind of like, I said, I said, yo, I said this three seasons ago, CP, before we even doing the show." Yeah. I was saying it's like if Metal is not careful, he could end up like Iverson. Yep. And it's it's going. He's on that track. Yeah, fast track, fast track. So, so this was a this was a a, a brilliant move by Melo. Hopefully, he'd be able to go to a team that um can use his services, man. Yeah, he can use services. He could use that bully off the bench, or maybe even close some games sometimes and show what he can do when he gets hot. Like he still has some some game left, but he just needs that shot. And it seems like he's humbled now. So hopefully, right. you know, like. That carries on, and people recognize. You know what? This is new. This is Metal Two Point He's a little more humble. He's gonna accept his role. Yeah, he's gonna help our team you know, get to that level. I think, like you said, the the interview was needed because there's a bad stigma about him right now that he can't shake. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The, the, the shocker to me is the Lakers, bro. Yes. The shocker to me is the Lakers because I thought last year it was supposed to happen. This year they needed to fill a whole damn roster. That is weird, man. And I'm look, I'm pulling up the roster right now. I mean, they picked up Greek Freak's little brother. Yeah. <laughs> My man averaged one point a game and point five rebounds. Avery Bradley, okay, good pickup, not bad. KCP, I like him. I mean, they got guys on here who don't even have their pictures taken yet with the team, bro. Yeah, man. They just got NBA logos as they photo. Like, what? <laughs> nah, nah, this is the one right here, JLs. Jared Dudley signed with the Lakers before Carmelo, they man. They got Fudd on. Come on. They got man. Elmer Fudd quickly, too. Jared Dudley signed with the Lakers very fast. Very fast. Oh, man. Be- before we could even finish snatching up all our guys, Jared Dudley signed with the Lakers Fast, because I remember I was in yeah. summer league and I saw Jared Dudley at summer league um, at, at one of the casinos. I mean, he was he had signed with the Lakers at that time. Yeah, man, for the culture. <laughs> I mean, come like, come on, man. So something oh. that's why something tells me that some something is just not right, man. Yeah, that leads me to the, that leads me to the Stephen A. segment when he's asking about uh, his friends. Yeah. He's like, do you take poly- like, are, He's like, do you learn some politics from your friends? Right. And then he started kind of, and then Melo kind of led himself into saying, I don't have to rely on my friends to get me jobs, just yeah. rely on my talent. Right. I was like, all right, cool. But uh, LeBron James got a super team. You know what I mean? Like, Le- LeBron <laughs> James is trying to win something right now. Like, Jared Dudley, come on, man. It's deep. It's deep, Jails. That is it's weird, deep. dog. It's it's not it's not just the skills. It's not just the talent erosion. It's deeper than that, bro. That's not weird. You remember when Carmelo Anthony came to the Knicks, and then I think J.R. Smith was like in China or something. Yeah. And then Melo was like, "Yo, get my boy J.R. from China." Right. Simple, like, simple and plain. Simple. Like I understand that you know you don't want to rely on your friends and he doesn't have to, but that that, that just seems weird. Yeah. That just seems weird. I thought that was like a no brainer. Oh, LeBron's no gonna- brainer, man. No brainer. Here we are, August third, and Carmelo Anthony's not picked up. It's deep. 
Yeah, man. It was deep, man. Another interesting topic was um, on the Knicks. And this was a great question by Stephen A. Because this had been kind of debated within the fan base and, and among NBA fans yeah. since he signed that deal. And this was Stephen A. asked him, you know, you had several chances to play for a contender rather than taking the money. And Melo's just like, well, what do you mean? Well, give me specific examples. And Stephen A., first he, first he pointed to the fact that, remember, Melo had extended his contract with the Nuggets past the 2010 free agency when everybody was due to come off. Because remember, he got drafted at the same time as Braun, Wade, and Bosh. Yeah. So Melo was a was was really supposed to be a heel. But he decided to take the money and extend the contract ahead mm -hmm. of ahead of Braun and Wade and that's how Chris Bosh ended up taking his place. Yep. And so when Stephen A asked him about that, basically he said, "Listen, you know, I was very immature at the time. I didn't see myself leaving that money on the table." At that time, we was we were really just talking about it, but nothing was too serious, so on and so forth. So he let that opportunity pass him yeah. by. Could have had yeah. two championships at least right now. Oh, that, yeah, easy, easy, easy. And that was when Melo was. Poof. Yeah, that was that was when he was slaughterhouse right there. Yeah, that's when he was slaughterhouse Melo. That was Melo. That was the Melo who took the Nuggets from the depths of yeah. disparity. Right, he, they weren't even in the playoffs, and then got him in yeah. by himself. Exactly. Exactly. So in the West. <laughs> right. Right. So I thought that was interesting. And then, you know, Stephen A also points to the fact that, you know, Melo's a loyal dude and Melo's brother was kind of intimating that Melo, he's trying to beat these guys. He's not trying to join these guys. And, and you know, Melo kind of agreed to that as well. But then Stephen A now touches on the other topic, which was hot amongst our fan base, which was the Chicago topic. Yeah. Why did he just come here for the money rather than go to Chicago with a better chance to win? Yeah. And he said he was leaning towards Chicago. He said he was there. But then he said, this happened, that happened. He fe he heard things that was going on in Chicago that didn't really seem too kosher. Maybe he was Thibodeau. Maybe he was Thibodeau. Yeah, maybe. Because he was saying, he was kind of alluding to that some people might not be there at the end of the day. Right. So it wouldn't be worth him going to Chicago. Right. And then so he said, basically, at that time, he came back to the Knicks. He was already tight at the Knicks. Comes back to the Knicks and says that they promised him that they were going to make moves. And so because he was already a New Yorker, he was comfortable. He wanted to do something with the Knicks. He wanted to build with the team. He took the money. What do you now, think about that? Now, were those moves, because I thought about this, like, were those moves... Bringing Joe King Noah and Derrick yeah, Rose. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing. That is the thing that I was looking like. See, here's the deal. When they gave him that deal, it was the summer of 2014 he got that deal. Right. He took $5 million less right. than the max, which left them with about $25 million to spend summer of 2015. That was his 50 win season, right? No, Nick's Tate 51 was 2012-2013. Oh, okay. So it was after that season. Right? They lose that season. They come oh, in. 2015 the, was the was the was the was the Bulls. Was the Joking. Okay, go ahead. Right. Sorry. So so Nick's Tate was 2012-2013. Right. They go into the offseason. He's still under that same contract. 2013-2014 is when they got Barnani at right. that summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That summer they maxed him out. It was the summer of 2014. 2015 now, the only free agents of that class, the top of the the, the class was LaMarcus Aldridge. Right? LaMarcus. Right. Oh, that's right. You know, was it, like Frank Monroe or something? it was the Greg Monroe free yeah, agency. Yeah, Nick Samson was mad. We didn't got, we didn't right. Greg Monroe. I was like, y'all bug me. Right. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm taking it to, yes, he's saying they promised him things. But then I'm looking like it was Greg Monroe. Aldridge would have been a nice pickup. Aldridge would have been nice. Would have been nice. Was, Aldridge would have been. I'm just, but I'm just thinking, like, with that 25 million in cap space, what were they really going to do to realistically build a contender? Right. That would keep Mel happy. Remember, Melo's 31 at that time. So I think I think you're right. I think to keep him happy, it really was bring Derrick Rose and Joe Kimi over here. 
because he ultimately wanted to go to Chicago in the first place. So right. they probably was thinking to keep Melo happy, we'll give him the money, and then we'll bring Chicago to him. Right. But it was a little a little bit too late. It was, Derek yeah. was not the same Derrick Rose, Joaquin Noah. It was definitely not the same Joaquin Noah. And we shot for the moon and we just hit the floor. It, it, was, it was silly to think about because... Remember, he was tight the night that they drafted KP, which was that same summer, 15, 2015. They mm-hmm. draft KP, and then they trade Timmy for Jerry and Grant. Yeah. I remember Melo had kind of leaked some stuff out there like he wasn't too happy about it. Yeah. You remember yeah. that? Yeah, I do remember that. At that time, uh, Tim Hardaway and Melo were like, that, Tim Hardaway was like little brother to Melo, so mm-hmm. he was definitely upset about that. Which ended up being probably the best move in this game. Best move, but it's like at the same time, it's like, okay, you gave Mel looking at it in hindsight, right? You mm-hmm. know, obviously we like KP when he was here. Right. But if you're really just looking at twenty five million dollars in cap space, it probably would have been your best move to either not sign Melo or trade that number four pick to try to get some help in here on top of the twenty five million. If you were really trying to go for it with Melo. I feel you. As the I guy. see what you're saying. I, you know what? You are absolutely right, CP. You're absolutely right. It probably would have been the best case scenario to, to go for it. Yeah. But, I mean, at this point, I'm kind of I'm almost a little happy we didn't. But Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely happy. But, I mean, just, just look how the whole thing played out. I mean, we did get KP in 2015. 2016, we had no first-round pick. Right. So things things is just spiraling out of control and there's no there's no end in sight. So instead of going and get instead of getting Lamarcus Aldridge, thank God they didn't get Greg Monroe, but they end up getting Rallo, Aflalo. Yeah, Rallo. I actually like Rallo, yo. I, I, I did I like Rallo. I did like Rallo. <laughs> and at the time, I thought Aflalo was a good pickup until he proved to be washed. Oh yeah, he was definitely. And then you know Derek Williams, Vujicic, it was just helter skelter with the team, man. Yeah. The funny thing is, we were doing all right with that team until uh, Melo got injured on the ref. Yeah, he, he we injured at, his knee. He injured. We were his actually knee. De- we were actually like around five hundred facts until he got injured. Facts, and he, he was never really the same after that injury. If you think about it, no, he really wasn't. He was never really the same. That's a fact. So, and then the very next year, see, this is this is like where like. All of this moves that were being made. Just thinking about this, all these moves that we were making to go backwards. This mm-hmm. is when the Nets were making their moves and going forward. Because the very next year, we go out and we trade for Derrick Rose. And we give Noah that boatload of money. Yeah, that was the... You know Woo. what I mean? It was like... Yeah. It, 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 they were just stuck in no man's land. Like, are you rebuilding? Or are you trying to win something? Either way, you're not doing either one particularly well. Yeah, and I remember at that time too. I I wasn't so mad at the Derrick Rose trade. I I talked myself into joking Noah because I was like, my first reaction was, "What the hell?" Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. Like four years. Four years. Oh yeah, yeah. Four years for a guy who hasn't played in a bum shoulder because he could do some chin ups on on a. Uh, Phil Jackson's arm. Like, yeah. Remember that story? Yeah. Like, oh, it's not joking, though, because he gets his chin ups on his no. it, it, it was ridiculous, man. R- ridiculous. It's tough times, man. Tough times. But uh, so that was interesting what he had to say in terms of why he stayed. Take it for what you will. So now, th- th- this is where he's at. You know, he went, he went on his, he did his interview. He got some nice PR out of it. I thought it was, he was honest. I thought it was candid. Yeah, I thought, you know, Stephen A did a great job, but it's just like now where does he end up? Because now I see I'm seeing people, me and Ari, Ari was in the DMs talking about we need to bring Melo back. He's in the chat right now advocating for him, the people's advocate. Oh, yeah, he was in my DMs too. He's like, yo, we got to bring Melo back. Nah, I'm not, I'm not with, are you with, are you with really bringing Melo back here, Jails? Yo, man, listen, CB, my heart and my mind. All right? Yeah. My heart and my mind. My heart says, man, Melo belongs in New York, dog. He gave so much to the NY Knicks. And I just want to see Melo win. Like, I just want to see him win. And that's it. My mind goes, yo, 
Knox got to needs time, man. Like the timelines still don't add up. It's a timeline. Thing. Yep. Like we need to develop some of these guys. You know what I mean? We like I Yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I, I'm not I'm not I'm not completely out. I'm not on CP out. But I like I'm conflicted, man. I'm out. I'm conflicted. I'm out, man. Sorry. I'm out. Like like if 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 if, if just like you know how the, how the news reported last week, if we got two big free agents and we was on our way to something, and he was just like, you know what, Melo, your role is to come off the bench and get buckets. Yeah. And we actually maybe had like a shot at something. Mm-hmm. Then I think I'd be more inclined to be like, yes, bring Melo in. But right as of now, we like he'll be taking minutes away from people who are developing. Even the it. guys that brought in are going to be taking minutes away. Yeah. Who are developing, and that's been my. That's been kind of my struggle with this offseason, even though I really love the, the signings because they bring us much-needed three-point shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going to be tricky. It's going to be tricky developing some of these guys and trying to win games at the same time. And I don't know, man. I'm conflicted, man. Listen, I, I think my take is is this. I think Melo has a lot left. I don't think he, as he said, he should not be on a farewell tour. I think he has a lot left. I think he's better than a lot of guys in this league. There's there's no way you could tell me that Jared Dudley deserved a spot with the Lakers before Carmelo. So that just goes to show me that it's way more than just skills. Okay? It's just way more than skills. (laughs) So, but with that being said, the Knicks are just not, we're not on that level to to be taking Melo back and bringing that attention back. We are still trying to bring in good juju and good PR back to this team, man. We we can't bring Melo here because once we bring Melo here, it's all eyes on Melo once again. Is he playing? Is he starting? Is he on the bench? What's he doing? How many minutes is he getting? How's him and Fizdale getting along? It's going to be all about him regardless, regardless of of what he thinks and what everybody else thinks. It's always going to be about Melo. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know what it is, too? He's so respected around the league. Yeah. That if we did bring Melo back, I feel like certain players would be like, yo, it would would be like a respect move for the Knicks in general. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like I said, it's just like he, he is he's such he's such an attraction. Right. He's such an attraction. And in New York, that attraction is gonna be like ten. He's a lightning rod, man, and it's not gonna work. We already got Knox in here. We, like we got we got the Morris Knox thing going on. We don't yeah. know how long that's gonna last. If you bring more mellow, it's just it, it makes no sense. It makes and no sense. And then we sense. have so many power forwards already, so it's like He's going to the small four minutes with, with, with nah. Knox and, and Morris. He's going to the power four minutes. With... Yeah, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. It's, it's not for us, man. And I love I, I love Melo. I, I've, I've been a Carmelo Anthony fan since Syracuse day one, game one. You know what I mean? Uh, before that, before that, I was, I was watching Melo from 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 Oakville when, when they had him and LeBron going in. Oak, Oak Hill, Oak Hill. And him and LeBron were going at it. Uh, All-American game. I was at the dunk contest at Christ the King. Melo doing 360s in the dunk contest. Him and Stat. With the Braves. Yeah. With the cornrows going. Syracuse. Oh, yeah. He had the lips, man. That's when he was Yo, banging. beast. Beast mode. But it, it, it it's just like you being the boss of a company, getting fired, leaving, and then coming back as like an entry-level guy. Like, that, that's not going to work, man. That's basketball life, though. That's the thing. That's that, basketball that's life. That's not going to work, man. No way. It's the same thing. Like, if Melo was D-Wade, then it'd be all right. You know, D-Wade was coming off the bench for Miami. and had a great season. Helped him make a push for the playoffs, even though they got knocked out. Yeah, but Flash, is a, he's a different kind of guy, man. Some guys so you can, don't can do it. You don't he said he, he, he will take the role. I don't, I don't think the NBA believes Melo, and that's why he's on the sidelines right now. Real talk, bro. I, don't I believe. Th- I don't think the NBA believes Melo will adjust, and that's why they're scared to pick him up. I believe Melo will adjust. He came over there. He came on that TV screen for a reason. I feel like he's gonna be ready. He's gonna be happy to play him wherever wherever he is. Yeah. It's just the fit for the New York Knicks at this time, this moment, is still might be a little weird. Yeah. It, it, Maybe it, it might it, be it a, a better work. fit somewhere else. 
like maybe I don't like definitely the Lakers to me is like seem like a no brainer. Yeah. We're still rebuilding, man. It, it does it doesn't make sense for us to do this because it just it just brings back the negative attention, the negative energy, the Isolas, the Bondies. We don't need that, man. We still we need to just continue on a, on a track towards positivity, JLs. I hate is gonna hate CP. I ain't losing my. <laughs> I, I feel you, but I, I don't gonna, know. Isola is always gonna Isola, man. Well, yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Nothing, nothing is ever gonna be good for them. I get it. You know, we could win right. a chip, and Isola would be like, I don't know, I don't like that substitution pattern. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he's gonna still say something. Like, it's, it, it is what it is. Man. I, D, D, please. He says, what's negative? It's, it's. I don't know if he's responding to us or what, but it, it it's a negative. In that, it, like I said, it's going to be all eyes on him. How much minutes does he play? Does he start? Does he play the bench? How does he feel? Oh, he went two for ten tonight. How, what's going on with him? You know, is Fizdell using him right? It's going to be all about Melo, man. This is about the new the youth movement. It's about Kevin, Mitch, Iso. It's about RJ. It's about, yeah. it's about what the hell is Frank doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what it's about. Yeah. And I don't think Melo's just going to come back to the team that he ran and just be a worker. Like, he he, he, he was a boss. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, it's, just, it's the timing with me right now. That's all it really is right, right. now. It's the timing with me, with the Knicks in particular. Yeah, go to a, go to a, go to the Lakers. I think they should have got him. The Clippers. Check out, you know, go help Golden State. What's up with Golden State? I mean, they, they're down so many people. Yeah. Now scenario CP. Yeah. Scenario. How mm-hmm. about I could maybe mm-hmm. if we were to bring Miller back, right? Mm-hmm. February rolls around. Nick see what they have. Mm-hmm. They try to move some of these veteran pieces um for some for some chips. Mm-hmm. Pick up a horse spot, then sign Miller for the rest of the year. He I don't I see I don't even think he would do that. I think it's all or nothing right now. Mm. I can't see him just being like uh you know, the I mean, he's already on, like, the last man picked in the lineup. But, like, I can't see him just, just coming for, from the free for the February deadline. I don't know. I, don't I can see, see him doing that with, like, the 76ers or something like that. Yeah. I, I see Mega BK and NY says uh, Melo to sixes out. I, I think that would be a good move. That would be a dope I move. I think that would like, be a good move for him. You read my mind, man. Melo to six because yeah. Melo coming off the bench for the sixes there. I got an established team. All you got to do is come in and beat up on the bench. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, Why man. Not, man. Let, let's go to the phones. We haven't heard from anybody in a while. Let's go to the phones. Our guy Will from LI is up first. He wants to give his take on the situation. Will, what do you think, bro? Well, first off, I got to say, it's just nice hearing y'all. The guys, boys, how you guys doing? Joe, uh, chilling, man. Uh, how, how you doing, bro? Uh, what a Friday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> Friday afternoon. It's doing good, man. This, this middle thing, this shit hit. Hey, afternoon, evening. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Oh, listen, man, this, this little thing hits home, man. This shit hits. Listen, man, you guys are older than me. You know, you guys were in the era of the Allen Houston, the Stephon Marbury, you know. You know, that you, the, you know that, that was y'all next, mm-hmm. you know. But for me, growing up, Miller was that guy. You know, when everybody was talking about their LeBrons, you know, their Dwayne Wade or whatever, Miller was ours, you know. And even like this past um, off season, I just think that he didn't get enough credit for wanting to be here. Like so many, like honestly, I think I think Kevin Durant didn't sign because he was scared. I don't think he didn't want that pressure. You know? Probably, just, right. just probably having right. the pressure, probably being alone, and everything that came with it. You know, probably maybe it's me being salty, but whatever. I just I just see him. That was a sucker move, but I didn't like it. Whatever. <laughs> but I just say, like, you know, people, it, it is what it is. But people got to look at Melo and, like, he wanted to be here, you know. Melo, you know, wasn't like, he he wasn't, he didn't want to run away from the challenge. We gave him, you know, we gave him heat for everything he did, you know. Everything he didn't do, the defense and everything. That's fair. But still, he was here. And yeah. even, like, we were treating him like like dog crap. Phil Jackson just running his name through the mud, just yeah. not saying nothing. Just you know, 
want to like go on, go in on the um the newspapers, say this, that, and the third. Yeah, well, Phil, Phil, Phil was an idiot for get that. Get attacked though. by the media. Yeah, yeah, Phil, Phil was foolish for that. Yeah. Phil, Phil was foolish for that. Yeah. You, 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 know, you can't go out and, and trash and, and your you know, star player and then try to trade him for, for high value after that. Phil yeah, Phil was no. just going all over the place. Real Absolutely. talk. Absolutely. Real talk. Absolutely. And I know you guys don't follow, like, the gossip or whatever, but, you know, he's going through some stuff with Lala. Of and, course, like, yeah. all this stuff. It's just... I just see the hit after hit after no, hit. I feel you, and it's just... Like, number one, I'm a Knicks fan first. I'm a Knicks fan before everything, right? Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as Mel got traded, I was like, damn, I'm going to follow what he does. But, you know, if it's him versus OKC, I was obviously voting for, you know, us to win. When it was him versus uh, us versus the Houston Rockets or whatever, I was voting for him. You know, I was voting for us, you know? Mm-hmm. So, it's, for me, the thing is, though, I don't want to bring him back. And I don't want to bring him back for the same thing like, you know, I, I look at D'Angelo Russell. And what he said, how hard it was to do that farewell world tour with Kobe. Now, I'm not saying that Carmelo's Kobe. Okay, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. All right? But the attention it took off, well, the, the, all the attention was on Kobe. And it was, should have been, you know, D'Angelo Russell. I don't mm-hmm. know if that maybe, if maybe he would have been the D'Angelo that we see now sooner if that didn't happen. Maybe mm-hmm. he would, maybe he wouldn't. But I wouldn't do that on this new thing. The only I thing I would say is that though. it would look good PR wise, but yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to risk it. It it, it, it would look good it, it for like the first PR, week, you know, man. Like, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But but at this point, this young core, what we're doing right now, we really rebuilding for the first time. And right. I think that you know, as much as I love Melo, to you know, and I hope that maybe we do like a one day sign and he retires as a Nick. Like we did the stat or something, but that's it. You know, I think that's I, what it's I, I'm not going to bring him back. But mm, I don't. I don't want to bring him back. Like, listen. Like, I think he could still ball. I think he could be. I think he can go to the yeah. Spurs and do work. I think he can go to the Lakers, uh, Philly. Uh, he can go to a lot of teams and really, you know, still do damage. Because I, because just like you said, Jared Dudley. It wasn't until you said that. That hit me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> Jared Dudley Jared, Jared oh, like, got signed before a lot of guys, <laughs> man. Damn, Jared nice. Dudley got signed yeah, before a lot of guys, man. I'll tell you, Great man. Great garbage, you know. But, you know, that's all the thing <laughs> I, I'm always going to have love for Melo, and I hope it works out for him. But, I, you know, I don't want to bring him back. I don't want to bring him back nah. until about one day and then, you know, end the career. But I still think he can bone. I hope that everything goes work, you know, does good for him. But either way, okay. it was nice hearing from you guys. Keep up the good work. Appreciate the call, Will. Right. Appreciate that call, man. Jared Dudley, JLs. Jared freaking Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a good point with the farewell. I was talking to Ari about that, actually. Mm-hmm. I was like, the Lakers were talking about how much that farewell tour for uh, Kobe just kind of sucked the life out the young guys, and they never really got a chance to really shine. Never got a chance to shine, man. We got to be looking forward, man. We got to be looking forward. We need, we don't need to be looking backwards at Melo. Yeah, man. I like to see him go uh, and, hard, and, and have a legitimate chance of winning the Yo, championship. Yo, he's talking about CP, man. I was nah, looking at him like, yeah, Melo, nah, why Melo don't got a hole? It, it, it would be selfish of us to want Melo. We should want Melo to go get a ring. If you if you like Melo that much, root for him to go get a championship and ride out on the sunset because he's not well, helping us. Melo, you want to come here. Is he's question. not helping us doing anything here. What do you mean? I mean... I, I don't know what's stopping him from taking a job, but I'm sure he would take it if it, if it meant staying home. You know, like, but, hmm, I don't know. Family we'll wise, I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. He would entertain coming here over any other losing team. You think so? Of course. Mm. Yeah. I mean, listen, his son is here. His life is here. I, I think he would make that exception. <sighs> I, I think he would definitely make that exception, especially that Phil's not here. Let's, oh yeah. <laughs> let's go to uh Jay from East New York. He wants to talk about uh the Knicks in the off season. Jay, how you feeling, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? What's going on, C P? What's going on, Jay? How's how you feeling, bro? Up, man? I'm all right. I'm doing okay, man. I I I definitely wanna say like I I was big on the, the mellow hate train. Mm-hmm. And, but after the interview, 
I, I I feel like my my you know my my views has changed on him a little bit. You know, I definitely feel like he deserves to be on a on an NBA team. I I'm thinking and I'm looking around. I I can't really say what contender I could see him on, but yeah. you know maybe a place like San Antonio. You know what I'm saying or Toronto. Like one of those teams could definitely fit him in some way. They could find a role for him some way. He yeah. do have a place in the NBA somewhere, but. With the Knicks, I I just we all in on Kevin Knox, man. He needed to develop, so he got to play. He got to he got to get some miles under him. So I don't I don't really want nothing to interrupt that, you know. And then it just it just wouldn't seem right, like you said. It's like like you said, it's like where he gonna come in? Like where he gonna come in and come off the bench? Like he was the star when he, he was, was a the star. He forced his way out, but you can't have the you know, boss he come back to be a buckets, worker, so. bro. You can't have the boss with the corner office come right. back to a cubicle, Jay Ellis. It's, it's not going to happen, <laughs> That's bro. That's the basketball circle of life, It's, the, it's not going to happen, man. That's the basketball circle of life, Not to the same life, place. It, it not to the same all, place, man. It happens to all the authors. D-Wade just did it, man. He just did it last season. He just he went to the Cavs and came back. Listen, man. He was beefing with Pat Riley. came yeah, back see, but, on the bench, standing on tables. and see, come see, D-Wade... D Wade, he humbled him, himself kind of early because right. of the injuries, you right. know. Like, right. Melo, he, he, I think he had like a little elbow or a knee injury or something, but it wasn't, it wasn't major, you know. So he was still thinking like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna come in at least put in like 16 points a game, like you know, like whatever happened to OKC, it just, it just went wrong. Mm-hmm. Houston, they didn't give him a chance. He, he was, he was just the sacrificial lamb, like. Daryl Morey and them guys, they they did him in. Melo, he got done dirty. And he, he got done dirty. He ain't yeah, really he he ain't throw dirty, CP3 man. under the bus and Harden and them guys, but he he should have kept it a little bit more. I I, I feel like they they let that rock because there's like, no I, way they could not have been involved, man. After ten games, you think the GM just gonna walk into the meeting after ten games? Be like, by the way, Melo's gone. I don't know. Man. I don't know. Come man. on, What's, that, what's that GM's man. temperament, man? Come on, J. Ellis, man. What's that GM's temperament, man? Come on, man. They did him greasy, like, man. Like I, I don't like I'm, to speculate I'm too much, but from what I'm I hear from like what people say about James Harden, they say he's passive aggressive. So mm. he seems like the type of person that, you know, get a personal meeting with Daryl Morey somewhere, you know, hey, uh, you know, it's looking <laughs> do what bad you gotta do, buddy. somebody's <laughs> like, you yeah. know, do what you got to do. Like, you know, sit at <laughs> home. Like, we can't cut him okay. We can't. If you can't cut him because of cat reasons, like you know, send him home. Yeah, it, it, it's no way. If James Harden wanted him, he he would have stayed around. Like Stephen A. Right. said, right? You know, and I'm glad that Stephen A. said that. That's good journalism. He put that out there, right? right. You know, no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like doubting that. Really I'm not doubting James Harden. I'm doubting CP3. You doubt it. So I heard some people say that. Some people doubting CP3 role in it, but people blaming Harden for it. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> knew. Somebody knew, man. Andy and Tony funny. was in it. It comes off real funny, man. But as far as the Knicks all season go, I I don't know what I we the all season is done. Like I'm yeah. looking forward to um training camp mm-hmm. and I, I want to see Knox put on some strength. Like I don't know if, if if he should you know work on his lower body or upper body, but I want to see Knox put on some more strength and I just want to see everybody just working on the the, the chemistry yeah. and they the the defensive mechanics. You know, like yeah. you know. Fizz, he, he's going to have them guys right on defense, you know. On offense, I think they could be 120, 100 plus point, whatever you want to call it, per game. This is the NBA. Guys is going to score. Like, this is this is what the NBA is now. So, I'm not really too much worried about the offense. I just I just want to see development. And I am I got my eye on DSJ, man. He he, he looking like he might. It's his, it's his time. He looking like he might, you know what I'm saying, turn some heads this season, man. I, I hope so, man. I hope so, Jay. It's looking good for him. It's looking good for him. Tomorrow. Yeah, man. Pre- appreciate the call, bro. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's uh from what I saw in, in summer league, it looked like Knox got a little bit bigger. Definitely <laughs> it got looked stronger. like he got stronger, and yeah. we expect that to come. You know, when they get in these nutrition programs and stuff, jails, man, they they pump these kids up as you know tranquilizers and all that. They, 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 they <laughs> size wise, you know, all these kids are gonna get are gonna get bigger. Um, is or will they get stronger mentally? You know, and put it all together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, as they say, sometimes the game speeds up for them in, in the beginning as as rookies. So 
Hopefully, yeah, saw, hopefully. Saw some, we saw some signs though. Yeah. We saw the passing get better. We saw him um, finish with a few and ones through yeah. contact. So Look like the offensive time. awareness got a bit better. But let's see where the def- the defense is going to be the name of the game for him. I think. Oh yeah, and, and knocking those shots down consistently. Definitely. And also Ooh. what he said, DSJ is so, certainly the key as well. Oh yeah, man. With Julius Randle coming in here, yeah, I said Julius Randle will come in here and, and score twenty a game, maybe possibly. Mm-hmm. If we got a nice point guard and set people up and hit jump shots, that's going to be. Uh, a nice little one-two, a one-two punch there. Probably. Yeah, man. We'll, we'll be all right, man. But yeah, we're, we're definitely gonna kick it up. Off-season talk. I mean, preseason talk. Soon enough in the coming weeks. So stay tuned for that. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. G. Andrezzi, what's going on? Tack is in the building. What's going on, Tack? Here. Frank White Robinson is in here. Rokeem Poe. Yeah, man. Yeah, see man. JL. So who you want to shout out in here, man? Yeah, I see. I saw you, Shell. I saw you. Uh... Uh, Knicks, man. Uh, guys, you got to shout out Michael Parker for the super chat. Yep. As always. L. Marshall uh, sent us a super chat as well, man. Only, you can see the comments. I can't see that. I can't see the super chat comments, JL. So if you see it on your dashboard, uh, just call it out. But um, salute to okay. Michael Parker and L. Marshall for sure for the super chat. Uh, L. Marshall chats. said Melo would, would fit well in Golden State. No Barnes, no Durant, no Andre. Yeah, uh, they lost a lot of people. Like, yeah. They lost was, a lot of people, man. They lost a lot of defense, Golden State. They lost Iggy. They lost yeah. Livingston. They lost Quinn Cook, who was a little scrapper. Cousins is gone. You yeah, know, man. They lost a lot of they defense. They lost a lot. They lost a lot. They might, they might as well triple down on offense, I guess. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why not? It's kind of like what we did. We used to triple down on offense. <laughs> That's right. I, uh, Michael Parker says, I think coaches and owners are still tight with Melo over getting to Antonio Fire and especially Mark Hughes. Interesting. Conspiracy. All right. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Let, let's go to the phones. Our guy Ari's up next, man. He wants to give his take on the situation. Ari, how you feeling, bro? Hey, what's up, guys? How you guys feeling? All good, right. man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So basically, um, you know, J. Ellis kind of stole my my compromise about mm-hmm. the trade deadline and flipping one of these veterans for a future asset. And then being able to slip Melo in there and get him the minutes. Now, um, that's kind of what, you know, I think that's the best move. Now, I, I know I've been talking to you guys about this, and I know you guys know, obviously, I want the Knicks to bring back Melo. But obviously, mm-hmm. you know, I'm a big Melo fan, and obviously the only thing missing on his resume is a chip. I would love for him to go to the – like, I would rather him go to a contender and chase a chip than come to the Knicks, for yes. sure. Mm-hmm. Lakers and Golden State come to my mind. But, um, but that being said – if no one else takes him, the Knicks the Knicks have to have to bring him back, and I and I don't even care. And and I think listen, I think it's more of a um, a PR move and a, an optics move. You know, um, you know, you know. A lot of people hate the Knicks, especially the older guys. And I know for a fact Charles Barkley hates the Knicks because they traded away Patrick Ewing and treated him like crap. Ever since we traded away Patrick Ewing, the Knicks have been garbage. Besides well, that one year where Melo took us, with Melo took us to the to the to the um, the second round, and that's if it wasn't fact. for a Tyson Chandler injury, I think we would have beat the Pacers. But I'm just saying, like we have a tendency to treat our stars like garbage, right? Yes. Ewing and Melo, we treated them both terribly. Okay, we ran we ran Melo out of town. Phil Jackson ran Melo out of town, mm-hmm. embarrassed him in public. Mm-hmm. The guy wanted nothing to do besides come to the Knicks, take the challenge that no one else was willing to take, and you're going to let him go out like that? Like, come on, man. I think it's a. I, I think I think if there's any organization that needs to have you know more more like that needs this PR and optics move more, it's the Knicks. And listen, if, if Kevin Knox has to play, you know, 15 minutes a game. Instead of twenty two minutes a game or twenty five minutes a game, you know, then so be it. You know, he could learn under a Hall of Fame small forward. There are worse things in the world. You know, now this is all a contingent, obviously, on Carmelo being willing to play. You know, fifteen minutes a game max. You know, being the eighth or ninth guy on the bench. You know, being a leader. You know, he would have to. You know, the Knicks would have to communicate this to him in advance, which is basically what he said on Stephen A. today. He said that he had. He said it was challenging coming off the bench, but he said that the communication is what was key. So as long as they're on the same page, I think you have to do it. And I don't even if it hurts your basketball team this year, 
or next year. It's just the right thing to do, and I think free agents and like people that he's connected with will 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 will, will have a newfound respect for the organization for at least not letting right, one man. of their own go out like trash. This, this is what I told you, man, when we were talking earlier this week. You can't get caught up on sentiment. When you get caught up on sentiment in sports, J. Ellis, it sets you back. You cannot. You look at you. Not the, if the, you have a perfect, veteran minimum contract. The perfect example of this is Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge, when he saw the time was right to get rid of Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett, he did it in a second. You know why? Because he said, you know what? We'll have the parade for you. We'll do the jersey, everything, when you come back. Doesn't matter. We're trying to improve. Right. It's about the team. It's not about any individual, man. What's the point of bringing Melo oh, in okay. just to say, oh, we brought Melo okay. in? Can I have a... What's the point? Can I... Can I have a rebuttal? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So, so, so basically, my counter argument to that is what Anthony Davis's dad said about Danny Ainge trading Isaiah Thomas away for what he did for the Celtics organization. Right. I'm never going to let my son go to the organization that did that. Right. So that's just the, that's just the fallacy of an argument. That's you fair, but Danny Ainge was right for doing NBA it. Is a, is, he was right for doing it after that hip injury. Isaiah Thomas has been washed, and Danny Ainge is served to be right. Yes, the uh, thing that happened with his sister was sad, no, but this I, is business, bro. Can't, can't no, get stuck that, that, that he, 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 he did not he did not do that Isaiah Thomas trade with um the, the injury was was after was I think after that or known after that that didn't, wasn't a factor in his mind. But listen, I just think I just think that you know the, the NBA is like any other business. You know, it's it's a relationship oriented business, and yes. I just think that if you get a guy. You know, you guys have no problem with Taj Gibson on a veteran minimum. No problem. But you I have, have no problem with Taj Gibson. Anthony, who's because Taj Gibson is defense. gonna know his role and he plays defense. <laughs> He's a mentor. Melo's not Vince Carter, on man. On Melo knowing his role. I don't, I don't know, man. Melo contingent on Melo knowing his role, and that's a big if. That's what I'm and, saying. And, and, and what I'm saying is, if but it I'm, doesn't work out, and they're gonna be forced to get rid of him. It all that PR goodwill, all that is out the window. JL's mm-hmm. weighing on this. JL's no, ahead, JL. I don't think. It's, Hold it's, on, Ari. JL's go ahead, bro. No, nah, it's just a, it's just it's pretty much what you're saying, CP. It's like it's really just like the balance of the team and the development at this point. Like like it's not even just Knox because I know Knox is the main point, but we also have we also have um we just got RJ Barrett. You just got RJ Barrett here. He's gonna take minutes away from. We also got Alonzo Trier. He'll take minutes away from. Like there's just not enough minutes to go along and we already have a bunch of these that's here as well who we just signed it's already too much guys for Fisdale so, to, to handle it's so crowded so it's that's like that's why I said at the trade deadline after they flipped these guys well JLs was saying the same thing I just that's don't per, I personally don't see him because then it's almost like damn like a desperation move like you know what I mean it's kind of like alright now it's already a desperation move well yeah you just went on national television <laughs> and yeah like you know? a job if like the like, only way, like if we, the only yeah. way I can really see it is if we end up trading Marcus Morris's contract, who is only here for a year, to like right. a contender. That's the only way I can see it. Maybe possible for him to come here because, right. but as Marcus Morris is here with all the young guys, I just, I just don't see it. I don't. I don't. It doesn't make sense. It's just not enough minutes to go around. Yeah, I don't know. All man. right. Well. I'll just say this one last thing, okay, and I'm gonna go get ahead. off the phone. Yeah, bro. We ran Patrick. We ran Pat. We ran Patrick Ewing out of town. Yes. We ran Carmelo Anthony out of town. We made Kristaps Porzingis for some reason want to get run himself out of town. Yes, Phil the Jackson. three best players we had in our recent memory, we ran out of town and we did nothing for them. Mm-hmm. And then people wonder why Charles Oakley doesn't is not a fan of the Knicks and why there's so much bad karma and energy around the Knicks. And it's over a veteran's minimum contract for someone who's a Hall of Famer who can help the young guys also grow their games just because he takes some minutes. I don't think I think I think the Knicks I think the Knicks owe it. I think the Knicks owe it. And that's just what I think. And okay. whether it's a good move or not, that's just what I think. I think they deserve it. I right. appreciate the call, Ari man. We don't owe him anything, JLs. I don't think so. I listen. I love Melo, man. I'll tell you. I, I I say it over and over and over again. I'm not a Melo hater. I just want to move forward, man. We need to move forward. Get rid. Yes, we didn't treat these guys right. No, no Phil Jackson 
was was terrible to Melo. It didn't treat him right, yeah. JLs. I get all and of that. Yeah. Phil Jackson treat Melo like right. But it's it's time. it's not gonna create any goodwill towards the Knicks because we brought him back on a veteran's minimum and let him come in here and do his do the Melo thing. It just it just doesn't make sense right now. That's like I I like I want him back for the sentimental reasons, but it yeah. just doesn't it doesn't make sense when you're thinking about doesn't make when sense. You think about RJ Barry, you think about Isozo, when you think of, when you think about Kevin Knox, and then yes. you you bring in Marcus Morris, who's our only real two way player here, right. besides maybe uh, I don't know Dotson and maybe Bullock. Yeah, like like everybody else is kind of even Melo. If you bring him in, he's, he'll kind of be like a one dimensional scorer. So right. it's like it just doesn't. It's not a fit. It's not it's a not fit, a man. Like not a fit. It, it, it's not a fit. And and my thing is, we need to focus on the youth. Who's sticking? Who's going? You know what I mean? Who is going to be here year over year and building the foundation to continue on? We have to figure out the point guard situation. We got DSJ in here. We got Peyton. What's Frank's situation? All right? RJ. RJ has to come in and develop. Kevin Knox has to continue to develop. ISO. You got Mitch who has to con- let it be about them. And we didn't don't, even talk about my guy Dot. Like, we didn't even talk about Dot. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, I think that'll be here. He'll be fine. I think that'll be fine. But, mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying is I love Melo. This is just not the right situation for him. To me, it doesn't help the league's hatred. It doesn't ease the hatred of the Knicks by bringing Melo back. I don't see, I don't see how that helps. I don't see how that helps. <sighs> And I can I, see the benefit of it helping the perception amongst players. I don't because Melo was loved around. Melo is loved around the league, so I can see that helping the the, the players. I can see that helping the perception amongst the, the players around the NBA. Saying, okay, well, maybe the Knicks are are, are cool. I can see you, that. Man. What helps the perception amongst the players is winning. Winning. That's it. <laughs> That's it, man. It's not sentiment. It's not, oh, you know, they gave this guy his farewell to No, it's winning. It's winning, bro. Kevin Durant did not give the Nets a meeting. And he told them on Instagram that he was coming to join the team. It's winning. Yeah. It's setting a good example. It's building the foundation. Right. That is what's going to get us the guys that we need to help turn the corner. Oh, obviously, winning over to me. Well, well, winning overall. If you're gonna win in a big market like New York, that's going to attract yeah any and everyone. Right. That's that's for damn sure. But I'm also saying that Melo has also loved to run the league as well. No, yeah. Listen, I'm not. I wouldn't um, um, disagree with that. Remember, as a Nick, he was always voted as as the team favorite. That's mm-hmm. even amongst the players in the locker room. So. And that's why I'm kind of glad he came on the show with Stephen A.B. to clear his name because a lot of the negative reputation that he gets around the league, the players certainly don't see it that way. Ooh, Mel to the Clips. I like who's okay, I see Frank Mel to the Clips. Frank Mato. Shout out, Frank. All right, let's go. Um, looks like the last call of the night. Moses is in here. Wants to talk about uh, the Mel situation. Moses, how you doing, bro? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Good, good, man. You just got to take us off speakerphone, Hello? bro. Yeah, yeah. You hear me? Yep, loud and clear, man. Hello, you hear me? Loud and clear, uh, First off, number... All right, let me tell you this. First off, number one, I I, dis- I kind of disagree with what the other caller said. First of all, I wouldn't bring Melo back because I want to focus on the youth movement. Now, let me talk about the Melo situation, right? If people for Well, we forget that when Phil Jackson, I think the year before Phil Jackson came on to the Knicks, um, Mello was having an MVP year, even though it, it still breaks my heart that they, they David Stern stole it from Mello and gave the MVP to LeBron, even though LeBron didn't even score that much points that Mello put up in the 2012-2013, the year they won 54 right. games, yeah. if yeah, I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, that was the year. Now, that was the year he came now, in third. Yes, yes. All right, thank you. Now, to, to move on, right? Um, like all the players, right? That the that they was giving Melo was washed up players. You want to talk about Jason Kidd? Guess what? The Knicks got him when he was forty. He was done. You want to talk about 
Tyson Chandler, he didn't contribute when when they, when they went up against Roy Hibbert, making Roy Hibbert look like Patrick Ewing. They, you want to talk about <clears throat> um, Derrick Rose? Guess what? They, Derrick Rose was washed. Joe King Noah was washed. Who was they giving Mello? Mello? Mello carried the team, bro. You understand? Yeah. He carried the team when, when, when he was in New York. He just didn't have the right pieces because they didn't hire the right people. First of all, and then last, and then another thing I want to bring up: we want to know why Melo is 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 in this situation. It started with Phil Jackson. Remember, Melo was a superstar be, before Phil Jackson got there. You understand? And then Phil Jackson came and kept on messing him up with that stupid triangle, and then and then after that, messed his game up, made him look bad. What happened? No, yeah, good, good. No, we was laughing, but yeah, good. Yeah, they made him look bad with that triangle, and then, and then you got Kristaps Porzingis, right? Now, okay, yeah, we drafted Kristaps Porzingis, but you have to understand his situation in New York as, is different from Melo's situation in New York. Melo was obviously a far better Nick than Kristaps Porzingis because guess what? Kristaps Porzingis didn't want to be there. You understand? He didn't want to be there. You trying to talk about Melo? Melo wanted to be there, bro. If Kristaps didn't. You, you, we had Kristaps for three years, and guess what? What Kristaps did for us? Nothing. You understand? Mm-hmm. Not well. He he put up twenty points, but then again, but then again, he did. He pretty much uh, didn't play last season, and then he didn't. And then he told the front office he didn't want to be there. Now, I think I I think the best thing for us to do is stick with the youth movement. Okay. And then and then build from there. And then maybe before Melo and if Melo try to get a ring, I want to see Melo get at least one ring or more Yeah, before yeah, he yeah. retires. And okay. then come back to New York that last season and play and then retire from there. Thanks for taking my call. Appreciate it, Moses. Appreciate right. it, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Point. <laughs> it's, it's fair points. It's, it's fair points. Listen, bottom line is Mel, Melo's got to uh, – Got to get back in the league. What, what do you think his legacy is going to be, JLs? What do you think, as we cap off this this Melo talk, what do you think is, if this is it for him, what do you think Melo's legacy will be? How will he be remembered in the league? I mean, I feel like he'll be a Hall of Famer for sure. Definitely Hall of Famer. Definitely but Hall of Famer. Just like, I feel like the fan legacy is kind of tainted because of these last few years, and that's, that's the sucky part. Yeah. Because people, I don't know, like a lot of people remember how dominant Melo was for for as long as he stretched as he's been dominant. So it's like it, people been talking about Melo playing bad for so long, mm-hmm. but like yo, he was beast with the Nuggets, dog, and he was like single handedly bringing that team. He brought that team out the fire by himself. Brought him no to the Western Conference Finals, man. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like I'm hoping he gets a ring, so at least he can have that little notch under his belt. Yeah. Um. The real Melo fans will hold him in high regard. But unfortunately, I feel like a lot of people will kind of uh, undervalue him. I agree. I, th- I think it, the the negative perception is, is going to, uh, uh, you know, haunt him and follow him. I think he's a, he's a hands-down, first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the greatest scorers to ever play the game, no doubt about it. The Syracuse, obviously, with Hall of Fame, they take into account, you know, college yeah. and Olympics as well. So, obviously, he's going to get in off of that as well, whether you gr- right. agree with it or not. But, you know, it's just going to be – I feel like it's just going to be potential not lived up to, unfortunately. And in the situations where, like Stephen A. said, you know, staying with the Nuggets, staying with the Knicks – those were just situations that never worked out for him in the long run. You know, it looked out for him. It took care of him and his family for sure. And you got to do yeah. it. You got to go for it if you can. But yeah, he didn't make the legacy move. You know he didn't I mean? make the legacy move. And and he, and he, when he took those deals, his teams were never in the position to build a proper team around him. Nick's tape wasn't a sustainable team. It was an aberration. It was yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. It was fun to watch, but it was a flash in the pan. It was a one-hit wonder. Yeah, man. Like, you really think about Jason Kidd was probably, besides Chauncey Biller, was probably the ideal point guard he should yeah. play with his whole career. That would point him to the car line. But Jason Kidd was was on his last legs, and as good as he did, 
kid melted the ball in the spots. He, he he fell flat when it came playoff time. Right. They they all fizzled. You know, Kurt fizzled. You know, he yeah. put it all on the line in Utah. We know that. Yeah, Jason man. Kidd, he couldn't that hit the broad hurt. side of a barn. But by the time the second half came around, Sheed was gone. But they did what they had to do. They did what they had to do. They did what they I'm had so to do. Mad. Matt and Phil, man, they, they overpaid for these bets too, man. I'm, they gave away too many draft picks for for Camby and them, but that's neither here nor there. That's, I'm, I'm still mad at that. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we know how that Bargnani trade went on as well, and that yeah. was terrible. But, hey, listen, I, I think we wrapped this up by saying good luck to Melo. We, we hope it's somewhere else, but it's not with us. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's uh, not with us, man. All right, all right, let's uh, like let, Melo, man. yeah, man. <laughs> well, let's get to um some other news, and that is on the schedule, Jay Ellis. The, yeah. the, the no Christmas Day. We thought there was a chance of Christmas Day. Nope. Coming to MSG, man. Nah, not this year, buddy. Not this year, buddy. What the hell was it? Was the were the odds? Were the were the schedule makers thinking with Christmas Day, man? Yeah, they were like, "Hey, y'all, y'all won seventeen games last season." <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yes, but okay. Clippers, Lakers, understandable. Great game, going to be a great one to watch with the family. Pelicans, Nuggets. You did Zion against the Nuggets. Yes, yeah, the that Nuggets, was a weird one. Like Nuggets were number one seed, but come on, J. Ellis, man, they, you could have done Zion, R. J. Merry Christmas, yeah. Coach K. You know. Yeah, you could have done Zion RJ. Celtics Definitely. Raptors, J. Ellis. Who wants, who wants to watch the teams with no stars left? What do, you, what do you want to watch? Lowry versus uh uh Marcus Smart? Come on, J. Ellis. Man. <laughs> Lowry versus Kemba. I mean that Buck Sixes. All right. Please. Well. Uh, uh, Celtics Raptors is when is when you say grace at the table and when everybody gets starts making their plate. <laughs> no, hopefully that that's first. That Siakam? should be first. No, I don't want to see no damn Siakam. <laughs> what do you want to damn? I like Siakam. He's good, but like, nah, that's not a game that I'm like just enthused to watch. No, Lowry, no, no right. hell no. <laughs> not without no, not without Kyle. Buck Sixers, okay, all right, a little rematch from last year. Um, okay, Pelicans Knicks. That's probably where the switch. Pelicans Knicks. Yeah, Pelicans. Pelicans Knicks should have been it. Rockets Warriors. Mm, mm. Mm, I, I can I can kind of a see little it. Brody, a little a little. Okay, all right, a little Brody Harden, and you got D'Lo yeah. and and Steph could be a little offensive. Uh, yeah, I can see that. I can yeah. Kind of see that. they they should have gave us Knicks Nets, man. Take that yeah. Celtics Raptors out and put oh. in Knicks Nets. Knicks Nets. Mm. Put in Knicks Nets or put in Porzingis. Bring Porzingis to the Garden on Christmas Day. Oh, that would be. What are you oh thinking? That'd be a circus. <laughs> what are you thinking? Bring Porzingis to the Garden on Christmas Day instead? No, because I can't. I, 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 no, man. Yes and no. Because I'm going. I gotta go to that game. <laughs> oh, we're we're in the building. We're 100 percent in. The yeah, building. I gotta that game. Yeah. And I don't know if I can look my family in the face and be like, "Hey, I'm missing Christmas this year to see KP right. and the Knicks and get, and see K, and see Julius Randle dunk on him with two hands." Factuals, factuals, factuals. <laughs> There, they should have put Knicks Nets in there instead of Celtics Raptors. Or you put the Knicks in there instead of the Nuggets. There's no Nets in there. So that's cool. Nah. We like that. We like that. Yeah, Keep we that. definitely like that. Keep that I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan. You ain't here. You ain't here. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, so that's the Christmas Day schedule. And then uh, November 14th, the return. Yeah. Of one Chris Porzingis. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the one. Circle your calendar. Circle your man. calendars. Get the popcorn, the popcorn ready. What? We will be in the building. Yo, I, I'm, already pra- I'm already practicing. Boo! Boo! Oh, are, are, you, are you booing or cheering, Porzingis? What are you doing? Boo! You straight boos? <laughs> okay, okay. Boo. I, I, I'm wondering if, 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 if things are going to slowly leak from his camp. I was thinking the same happened. thing. Closer to when that game drops. If so I'm, I'm a PR guy, yeah. I'm I'm dropping Nick yeah. Kate the week before. Yeah. So I'm reserving my booze or cheer decision until I hear what happens. So I'm a game time decision. I'm a game you time think, decision. Rookie King says KP's gonna kill us. Oh, I man. would like to I would like to uh 
KP is coming off of a, an injury. Yeah, a lot of people's like, damn, he's not even gonna play. Right. So is he, he hasn't even played an NBA game in a year and a half. Right. Uh, two. Have you seen Julius Randle uh, bang it on KP when he was on the Lakers? Yeah, Ju- Julius is taking no prisoners this year. Don't sleep. Yeah, Julius is taking no prison- prisoners. Don't, don't sleep. Fact. Don't 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 sleep. Julius Randle is gonna work KP out. That's I'm a fact. Man. That's a fact, man. So yeah, so we'll see. We'll we'll definitely be in the building for um. Knicks and Mavs will we'll be there. J. Ellis will we'll definitely be there. So definitely gonna be there. Boo! The boo's ready. <laughs> get, <laughs> get the booze ready, man. Get the booze ready. Shout out everybody in the chat once again, man. This is this was a little spontaneous impromptu live stream. Mm-hmm. Um, shout out everybody watching on the Nick of Time show. Facts. Uh, the Knicks fan TV live stream is still in in in. Uh, a little bit of a predicament, but we will be back and ready for the preseason. Hell yeah. Yeah, so make no mistake. We will be back and ready for the preseason. Just just going through a little issue with YouTube right now. You know how it is, Sales. You know what you know what it, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Julius Randle's a high vibe efficient score. Yeah, right? Julius is gonna make the all star team this year. Yep. <laughs> I I'm pretty po- positive about that. We just need a guard to step up. Just, yeah. just, just give us one, David. Just yep. Give us one guard. <laughs> Um, what else? Other news? No RJ in the FIBA uh, World Cup. RJ will be sitting at the FIBA World Cup with mm. a strained calf. CP? Yeah. Conspiracy theory. What are you thinking? What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking it's fake, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> fake, dog. <laughs> yeah. It's fake, man. We don't believe that, you. That was a message from the Knicks. Like, uh, yeah, you don't need that, man. Don't worry you about don't it. You don't need that. We don't, don't want that. you risking nothing. We mm-hmm. want you to practice right here with us. Screw that noise. They were doing the same thing. They were trying to – remember Frank first got here? They were trying to discourage him from playing with France. Yeah. Like, the Knicks, is, Knicks don't mm, – nope. They're like, nah, yeah. son. Sit down. And and uh, I was reading a transcript from Frank's press conference for Team France FIBA World Cup team, and the French media was asking him. Supposedly, there was a situation where I guess the Knicks clearance papers were delayed by several weeks past the deadline, and so the French media was kind of insinuating that maybe the Knicks didn't want Frank to play in the FIBA World Cup, so they asked Frank about it. Frank said he didn't think that was the case. Yes, the paperwork was late, but it still came in. He always knew he was going to get cleared by the team. Frank is good to go. This is the year Frank should play, man. Like, the yeah. first few years, I didn't want him to play. I wanted him to stay here, work out with the team. Mm-hmm. But, but, like, considering, like, the, the point guard death and the battle, like you don't know where the Mason come from. Right. This is the year where I really want, actually do want Frank to play in people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, he needs as much reps as he can get. Uh, mm-hmm. The summer league would have been nice to see him, but obviously they don't want to burn him out with too many things. So uh, play for his country is obviously the most important thing. So obviously I, I see why they, they prioritize one over the other. Julius Randle is on Team USA. Yes, he did receive yep. a camp invite. Doesn't mean he's going to make the team. Mm. And doesn't mean he's going to play. Mitch mm-hmm. is on the select team. Yep. He's not going to make the team. He's just going to be practicing with him. Yep. And uh, challenging everyone's shot and making them rethink their lives when they yep. meet him at the rim. Oh, yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. And the select teams are on um, – they show the select teams on, on television, right? Um. Yeah. I got to check the schedule on that. We'll definitely get back to, to the fans on that in, in that regard. What else? Um. Opening night, home opener. As you guys know, we will be hosting the largest – Sweet event in Madison Square Garden in history. We have Here. a 100 person Chase Lounge MSG suite for the Knicks home opener. Date to be determined, but it's yeah. going to be out sometime in October, obviously. And uh, that's going to be a great night, man. So we're taking deposits. Hit the link in the video description for to make your deposits if you guys haven't already. It, the, the ticket is going to include a, a seat for the game, food and drinks, a chance to meet Knicks alumni. We're going to have giveaways, and we might have a couple more perks, so it's going to be a blockbuster night. Make Word. sure you guys are in attendance. We got people from all over the world coming. 
100 person suite it's going to be the largest suite for opening night we're going to kill it and that's going to be hosted by yourself cp myself myself yourself myself cp my man jl's from nigga time show and our friends at nick's omni fan so yes our food and drinks are included not alcohol soda food and drinks are included in the package you sure. will get a chance to meet a nick's alumni member we're going to have giveaways shirts and possibly right. we're working on some more things as well, man. So we're working on a lot of things. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And uh, Nick says no Henny. Now, <laughs> no Henny. The Henny's on you. <laughs> the Henny's on you. But, but uh, yeah, so like I said, we're taking deposits on it. Hit the link in the bio. I've sent it out through email already. And, yep. um, yeah, man, you, you guys make sure you come through. It's going to be it's gonna be a crazy night. It's going to be a crazy night, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. All right, Jail. So let's get out of here, man. Let me uh let me get you some theme music set up. All right. Let's get you out of here. Shout out to everybody that came through tonight, man. It was a good yeah, night. Yeah, man. Definitely. It was, it was night. a nice spontaneous impromptu stream. You know? Word, man. He was like, yo, this metal thing is getting big. Maybe we should talk about it. Yeah, why not? Why not? You know? Dust it off the old mic. Yeah, it was a good talk. <laughs> it was a good talk. Hopefully we put it to bed. I mean, listen, it's Mellow, man. He's a very polarizing figure. You either love him or you hate him. You know. Hate him? Come on. See, hey, come some, on. some people do. Some people look at him as a ball hog, doesn't play defense. You know this. You know the Mellow stick. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they hate him, though. Yeah, man. All right, man. Go ahead and then, uh, sign out, bro. All right, man. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel and off to do that, you can subscribe to Nick's Fan TV as well. Um, I usually, at this point, would say you can catch me every Tuesday um, on SoundCloud.com slash this time show and watch me and my friends talk Nick's. But I'm on vacation right now. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but you still subscribe and we will be back um, probably in September to catch preseason and possibly even talking to our guy CP right here. So definitely check that out. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and our SoundCloud. And also, we are also on Spotify, Google Play, uh, and iTunes. That is all. Back to you, CP. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Great show as usual on the fly. And uh, yo, listen, man. Shout out to everybody that came through, man. Ari, thanks for calling. Tack, appreciate it. Nick's 1904. Shells was in the building. Salute to Shells for supporting Shells. I'm going to pick up that package in a little bit tomorrow. So we'll have some uh, some surprises from Shells for next season. Appreciate it again for the support, man. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, Jay Huggy Bear, thanks a lot. John Talento, always appreciate it. Staff of Dom, bless up. And Ricky King, appreciate it. Make Word. sure you guys are uh, keeping in touch with us, man. Instagram. Word, Ro Smith. Shout out to Ro Smith. I see you, bro. Ro Smith, appreciate it. Oh, Ruel, appreciate it, Ruel. Appreciate it, Ruel. The new Mitch Please t-shirts are in stock. Pick oh, yeah, I got to them on my joint, too. <laughs> Pick yours up in the video description. Join the conversation on Twitter, on Discord, by sharing this video with hashtag PostGameNYK. We'll throw you in those group chats. The group chats are going on 24-7, so you can jump into the conversation. Keep the conversation going with yours truly, Jay Ellis, and a host of other Knicks fans. We got a 100-man group chat going right now. Catch this yeah. show in audio format. Very important for you podcast gurus. Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. The show is on all the major platforms on the Knicks Fan TV. So make sure that you are keeping in touch with those platforms, subscribing, and so that you don't miss any of the shows, man. Thanks. Yeah, man. So as we said, uh, this was just a spontaneous one, but as we get closer to the preseason, training camp kicks off, we will be back on a regular schedule. You know what it is, man. After every game, preseason, season, postseason, uh, we'll see. We'll see, James. Yeah, man. We'll see, man. Right now I'm going 30 wins, but we'll see. Uh -huh. Never know. <laughs> we <laughs> never know, man. But Word. yeah, man, once again, guys, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, keep up with us, man. Have a good weekend, everybody. Peace.